Welcome, and thank you for joining us on Building Greatness, The Warrior Way, a West Cliff University Athletics podcast, brought to you in part by our five C's, and win, what's important now. As always, I'm joined by our SID, Chase Dodge. How's it going, kid? And I'm Will Smith, your assistant AD of operations, back with the what's what in athletics and culture. Let's check in and get into the game. Hey, my team, what's going on? Chase, Dodge, my guy, how are you? How are you dude, today? Man, I, I'm going to be real. I'm, dude, I'm exhausted, man. You had a I long mean, night, no? I mean, I mean, sports are back, baby. Like, it's like we've had, we've had already, like, dude, I, dude it, I'm so bad because, like, we've had only two home games and already I'm just like, oh my gosh. I'm so happy to be back, but also I'm just like, I forgot. Like, I mean, when you're enjoying the summer, you forget how much work you just put in the previous year, right? We really do. You kind of, it's like, it's like, a, it's like going back to school after summer vacation. It's oh like, my. I forgot about this life. And then, you know, you got your discussion post due on Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, you're like, right no, now, go, go, go. Well, it's just like, it's like going back, like from high school and college of just like, you got your summer. So you're chilling with your boys. Uh-huh. First of all, timeout. You're also sleeping in. <laughs> and then, oh, as much oh, as possible. And, and, as and much then, as possible. As much as possible. So when when school starts, then it's just like, fudge, I got to be up at 8 a.m. or even earlier. Uh, and then also now it's like we got game day stuff. So we got, I mean, we got a lot of prep work stuff going on. But, you know, the best part about this job is just getting to talk with the student athletes and watching them just – play the sport that they have dedicated so many years to and just watching them like just compete and have fun you know it, it's sure. awesome last week of august i mean my god it went too fast i know we still got about 20 or so days left this summer but we're back in action but i'll be i, I mean honestly i was not prepared for the summer to be over but now that we're in full swing, dude, my energy level peak is up. You know what I mean? Between the things that we got the ability to do this year with soccer and volleyball, I can't help to be extremely excited about this season. I know you guys and the SID staff has been prepping all summer. I've been with you and on the, on those meetings. And it seemed like it would never start. It was just prep, prep, prep. And now we're in full swing. B, the super producer, Bro, I know you got your plate full. I've been seeing documents and interviews and and everything that you do. Are you ready for this, brother? Are you ready, B? Uh, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. And that's why you're the super producer. That's no way, no way. Time out. That's, that's not. That sounded mean. like a. That sounded like a quote from our own DNF Athletics, Sean Harris. That, hey, I, that... I haven't heard that phrasing since like 2019, 2020. It's like he, does, he does. He does. He does track. say it a lot. But I remember when I first got hired. That's the first thing he said to me, like, first home game, man. But isn't it that way? And and I think you guys exemplified that this summer. Y'all spent the time. Really, I don't. I remember the season ending. I don't remember you guys missing a step. You diverted right into the offseason program, and it was all about what we're doing right now. And that's back to what we do best. Yeah. And that's that's sports. Well, Will, Will, I'm going to be honest, and you can talk to any SID across this country. We man we we wear multiple caps like we and our and our sid team is very unique because um sean had a, a had a vision for um this like communications department sid team that because we do highlight the student athletes we do all like the social media stuff articles all that cool game off stats work all of that and we have a great team surrounding ourselves where in some some institutions it might just be one person doing everything and it and you, they can feel overwhelmed so why we do a great job is cuz we got we tapped into skills that everyone freaking you know excels at but also like for me man i don't like being stressed on game day I like I like making sure I got all of my preparation done the week prior. So then when I just I just pull up and it's just like boom, let's go. I'm here to watch 
soccer. I'm here to watch volleyball. I'm here to cheer on our athletes. You know, I don't want to be worried about, oh, hey, did I forget this piece of equipment? Oh, I forgot to print this sheet out. I have all that prepared because I want to enjoy watching sports. Because like I said, time and time again, I'm a huge sports fan, Will. Oh, I know this. I mean, and and you're willing to do the prep. And I think that we find that with most people that are involved in sports. As a matter of fact, if you're listening to this podcast, if you didn't know what an SID program is, you should get familiar. You may not be the person that plays sports but loves sports. There's a place for you. There is a place for you in sports. Look into SID. Shoot, look into SID at Westcliff. We've got a whole program here uh, um, built around uh, a sports management. There is a place for you that truly love all sports that are engaged. And honestly, Chase, you kind of exemplify that. If I, you want to talk about volleyball, you know what it is. If you definitely want to talk about soccer, I just shut up and listen. But as far as I'm concerned, you've got it covered. I haven't talked to you about football yet, but we don't have that program yet. Maybe we'll talk about that later. You know what? And, and I'm okay with not having football because they're such a beast in of itself that, I mean, I can't do football and all the other sports with the same kind of enthusiasm and energy i'm gonna be I honest i don't believe that sir hey i don't I, I don't, hey, hey, I don't care what you you'll believe. learn it hey, I no, know no, no 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 because it's it's proven time and time again when you look at d1s and d2s they have a, a special like they're kind of like a mini athletic department to be real oh um, i bet it, it they're just they're just massive because i mean dude you have like minimum you have 60 guys on the squad 12 coaches mm-hmm probably like two athletic trainers to go with him. Like, yeah, you got a mini, you got a mini athletic department set up with a football program, but well, we um, had a pretty busy, even though we don't have football yet working yeah. on it. Um, we had a pretty busy uh, last two weeks, right? We, we, we had a kickoff early. I know we had some of our first scrimmages on the 15th and the 16th. I think soccer showed up and did really well. I think we talked about that last time. I think Friday we were at Norco with women's soccer. How did that work out? Uh, women women played uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills last Friday. Uh huh. Um, played very well. Um, played very well. Their first actually their first official game was actually yesterday, uh, against Chapman, and right. unfortunately, I mean, it, it, the result didn't go their way, um, due to a couple of players getting, um, injured right off the gate, and yeah. you know, you forget how sports is a big it has there's a big mental component to it a big mental and emotional component so um one of our captains went down with an injury and it, honestly in the first like 30 seconds of the game and that that has an effect on the whole team playing for the rest of the game and so we lost against chapman uh, but you know they'll be back on saturday playing occidental and also like their season just started, so they'll be fine. How's the uh, captain? Haven't heard any word. Um, oh, well, shouts out to captain. Hopefully they recover quickly. Um, but we had Chapman, and then on the 30th, we also had volleyball. They were up at Santa Barbara City College. We we hosted. So um, At JLA? Yes, at JLA. Um, but first, uh, for the uh, injured player, I believe her name was Sierra Wrangle. Um, so wishing her the best and – Speedy recovery. Um, speedy recovery, but also just, you know, we're, we're all thinking about you, um, along with your team, um, who definitely miss you out there on the pitch. Um, but, yeah, for, for women's volleyball, we hosted uh, Santa Barbara City College. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, when we had uh, Coach Cole on the pod, they, they, played, they played well. There was a few things they needed to clean up, but – I mean, you forget their their team is very. They have less than I think ten players. Yeah, I think they're still working to build out their roster. Eh? Yeah, so they have ten players, um, or I believe yeah, somewhere around there. So not not a huge squad, but they were able to compete um, with a team of like twenty eight. So they were able to, and, and here's the thing. Also, like the other team like, was constantly pushing in sub subs. Our girls were just going hard like they they were uh they were playing hard um not they like they look good um they just need to honestly it's just an endurance thing you know because they have a lot more matches to do for the season they just need to um honestly they just need to stick together as a group that's all they that's all they can do in terms of just like 
things and here's the thing with sports like things might not go your way but as long as your teammates and your coaches have your back everything will be good that's what that's what i'm hoping with our women's volleyball team so they got they're back on the court uh, against number 15 ranked vanguard tonight um uh thursday the 31st um so they're exciting but um also our men's soccer team played on tuesday um in their home opener uh against bethesda won that match uh 2-0. Two zero. However, in my opinion, it should have been a little bit higher, but really? oh, one hundred percent. We had um, there was a penalty shot that got uh, saved, um, and then we had a a couple. I think we had one or two open net opportunities that uh-huh. missed, and honestly, the shot count was pretty. Like we we recorded over thirty shots. Like I'll put it this way, Will. It because I that was the first time I did play by play. Um, after like a year absence where, I mean, I'm doing the play by play and I make the comment cause I go, cause we're in the second half and all of a sudden I see the ball, like it's like half field. Right. And so I see the ball launch back to our keeper and I was like, Oh, and then uh ball goes all the way back to uh West coast keeper, uh, Erickson. And I go, you know, I don't think I've mentioned that man's name all half. Like that's, <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> wow. That was just to paint a picture of what that game was, was just pure warrior domination in terms of possession. But also, I, dude, I saw a lot of positive things from our team. They were, they were aggressive in challenging and pressuring the ball. They were also very patient with their passing and trying to create open lanes and trying to create dangerous situations. They did that the whole night. Um, it's just, you know, you know, I want hey, the score could have been higher, but you know, they got the win. And that's all that matters. And there was no negatives in that game. And they're all. back tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah six they're back o'clock, playing Stanton. They're back. Uh, they're back uh, 31st tonight. Uh, as of recording of this podcast, uh, 7 PM against Stanton university. Um, so that should be, that should be a good game. I don't know what to expect from that game. Cause I don't, this is Stanton's first year playing as a program so i don't know and they've played fellow um fellow conference member la sierra and saint catherine to open up their uh season um uh, tied tied against saint catherine okay um and then barely lost to la sierra 3-2 wow. so this is going to be probably a little bit more competitive game than bethesda Bring it but on. but honestly to the depth that coach Dodge has on that, on that team is ridiculous. Like when, I mean, like I'll put it this way. Like one player last game played all 90 minutes. Everyone else was just like, they got sub opportunities to catch a breather. Like, and and also it wasn't even just like everyone reloaded. Like everyone has a cool style to their play that Bethesda didn't have an opportunity to like, once they like were man up with a player of like trying to figure them out, get subbed off for an entirely new type of person. And now it's this open season where, by the way, I think I'm going to pull up the stats. So don't, so just stick with me for a second. No worries. Do it. Oh, I, I gotta do it. Cause I, I got, you know, I gotta do some fact checking, you know, always, <laughs> oh, dude, always. Right. I don't want anyone to call Stat me out. Just, man. Hey, yeah, I don't, Hey, Why I don't are you want... looking that up? Just remember, uh, this weekend, they're back on Saturday. Women's soccer is uh, at OCC uh, to play Occidental. And then on Sunday, men's soccer is uh, playing US, UCSD uh, at uh, UCSD. It's an away game. Get on the stream. Get to the, get to the, uh, uh, to the field. If you've got the time, uh, be a part of this. It's an exciting season. Uh, they're playing hard. And really, we're just getting started. So, you know, get in early on the bandwagon. Oh, absolutely. Now, I, I had to pull up the stats because I wanted to make sure uh, we had 13 players register a shot on frame, um, which is pretty – I mean, normally, like, you might have, like, one or, like, three players that can create dangerous shots for your team. Ever, everyone's – dude, everyone's lethal. Mm. Everyone's lethal. Um one of the cool things that I got to see, we got um, Quentin Hornung back, and he uh, was the 
2021 Cal Pack Player of the Year in our first year uh, in the NEI in the Cal Pack. Mm. So he's back. But also we have a lot of cool um, uh, returners. Uh, we got uh, Adekunle, who's right now I think is on a on a two game uh, scoring streak, uh, along with um, a new player, uh, Wiesem Obed, um, number eleven. Who, if you're watching the stream, please look out for him because he's really exciting to watch. Because he 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 has had a lot of dangerous opportunities on Tuesday. I know he will tonight. Um, and then also it's just our dude, our back line, mm-hmm. is, it, dude, it, they're dirty, bro. Like they look clean. Nothing's getting by them. Like they're, they're not afraid to like pressure you when they know no one else is behind them. They do not care. They're not playing back. They're like, Oh, I get an, I see an opportunity to stop the forward momentum of the opposition on the ball. I'm going to go for it. And they do. And nine out of 10 times they freaking win that ball. Like, I, awesome. I can't tell you how many times they just, when Bethesda was looking for a counterattack in our back line, just halted them in their tracks. So we've got a lot of, I mean, shoot, there. this is the time to jump on, you guys. If you're not paying attention to our soccer uh, program, you're doing yourself a disservice. This weekend will be big. Just to give you a little pre next week is going to be big as well. You got men's soccer uh, playing 9-7, which is Thursday. They're going to be touching uh, uh, Embry-Riddle. You know, that's one of our, our our teams we play every year. Women's will follow that same on the same day playing them. That's both at the, uh, at the uh, OCGP, which is uh, the the Great Park. Make and sure not, and they, not only is it at the Great Park, it's in the soccer stadium. It is. In the, exactly. It's in the stadium where they should be. Thank you very much. Um, also, next Thursday, we've got volleyball. They're heading out uh, uh, to their first uh, uh, road uh, stretch. They've got a They've got the NorCal trip. They're going to head all the way up to, to Reading to play Simpson, all the way back down to Merced, <laughs> and then back up to uh, uh, to Pacific Union. I don't know how they scheduled that out that way, but they've got a lot on their plate. Uh, soccer is also in Arizona. Uh, I'm excuse me, is, play, is seeing Arizona next week. Also at the Great Park, they're playing Park Gilbert. Next week is going to be excellent. All in through the weekend where we've got water polo starting their thing. Over at Redlands, they've got a tournament both days on the 9th and the 10th. Uh, Santa Barbara and uh, US, uh, CSU Fullerton, as long as as well as Long Beach State and Whittier College. We got a great week. The next 10 days is going to be pretty awesome. Oh, absolutely. I'm just excited for the season to start. I mean, we're just we're just in shit. Like we're just starting. So I'm really excited. Like, like we talk, we're about to talk to our our, our men's beach volleyball coach for uh, Fernando uh, Sabla. And you know. Men's Beach hasn't started yet. They're they're waiting to to start in this next two three weeks, and then we got we got cross country. Have you, you know? gotten to talk to Coach yet? I had a, I got to spend a little bit of time with him uh, recently. Yeah. The dude is infectious with his excitement. He's dude, oh uh, he, yeah, I can't I can't wait for for to ask him some questions because I know he yeah I, I talked to him a little bit um, for media day um, and also to some of the players. Like I mean, man, they just got back from from like their summer vacation from uh back from their home countries i know uh pizza coming from brazil i know uh powell twos coming from uh poland like so they're yeah they're just they just touched down in the states a couple days ago actually because school school, hey because school just started on monday it did and i'm back in it i don't know i know you you're a graduate but i'm still working my way through oh i yeah i got done with my undergrad and i was like "Mm, i'll i'll be okay for right now I heard that. I'm, I'm I'm well behind you, but I'm getting I'm I'm getting it done, <laughs> getting it done. But uh, uh, again, I got to talk to him, and and you can tell he doesn't want to get too excited, but you can tell he knows what he's got in store this season, what the possibilities are, and that's all I care about. When you got a great positive attitude, and there's a there, we say so. You say there's a chance. He says there's a chance. Watch, we're we're gonna have this conversation. I'm telling you, he can barely hold it back. You know, it, it, honestly, I'm so I'm not even focusing on on fall solo. Like, dude, I'm also thinking about winter. I'm 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 thinking about spring, man. I'm just excited. Like, I wish uh, this is like this is me as a sports fan. Like, I wish they all play at the same time. But the SID in me was just like, hey, please don't do that because uh, I like my sanity and like sleep and my free time. Like, we have every game 
every sport playing at the same time, I'm going to freaking lose it. You know, it, it can't do that. But I'm, dude, I'm excited for, I, I, I did get to, I get to talk in with a, a lacrosse player on campus. I got to talk with, um, you know, about a wrestling, like I'm excited for all of our sports. Cause here's the thing, what's really unique. And we, I think us as an SID team, kind of like we're talking about it and, you know, we're talking about like, Oh, Hey, how many, <laughs> how many conferences are we in mm. or how many like associations? And it, it's like, it's like damn near like nine or 10 in terms of like one sport might be associated with one association or conference. And it, it's a lot. Like hey, we're making noise. That's what you got to do sometimes, right? You got to make the noise. It's an exciting year all the way around. I'm, 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 I don't, I can't even get to fall yet. Really. I'm still getting started uh, with school, but I feel like we just have a full season of really opportunities. And, uh, you know, we did a lot last year, and I know a lot of people are looking to see what we're going to do this year. I don't think it'll be the same, but this is the point. We made the noise. Now all the competition is going to come looking for us, and we want that kind of smoke. We want that smoke. Absolutely. I don't think it will be the same, but, you know, like I mentioned time and time again, it, it's about, you know, it's the five C's, you know. You that know la I mean? The last one is championship. Which, because I mean, I think the first one is the as character, second is culture, third is community, and the fourth one is commitment. Right, like those ones are essential to be able to build up a program worthy of championship status. So, I just go back to like I, I'm making sure every program operates with the same kind of level, of like having a good culture, having you know establishing that community. Because if you don't have those four you're you're not i don't think you'll get the fifth and i don't think you might deserve the fifth and so even though i don't think we'll have the same kind of level of success as last season i don't care because all of our athletes exemplify the five c's and that's all that that all that matters when i'm when i'm cheering them on and like supporting them is that they're great individuals they're great athletes and you know it's just I love sports and, you know, I'm, I just enjoy seeing the passion out on the field and the swimming pool on the basketball court, wherever they do the competition, I win, lose or draw. I always love supporting the student athletes. Talk to any SID in the country. They all love winning. Yes. But every single person I communicate with in this profession, we all love and support our student athletes. Dude, I think it's one. I love our student athletes. Two, this may be a hot take. You know who else I really like? Our SID team. Now, I look forward to them, and I think we need to put a little bit of a highlight on it. Do we have any media pieces coming down from SID we should be looking for in the next week or two? I know you guys have been working hard over there, but I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, yes. I don't. I mean, I don't know if I, we're allowed to say it, but you know, we do a lot of stuff. I know I got Joffy. Um, he's been doing a bunch of highlight stuff for all of our fall sports. We got some media day. Um, we got our man Sanjay, who, you know, a graphics guru, um, doing his work, um, just doing a fantastic job with social media at large. Um, we got our man Cisco, who does a fantastic job. I think we already gave him praise last week. I don't know if we need to double up, but we will. Yeah, anyways. go ahead and give a little. Give him a little. It's uh, all right. It's Cisco. Cisco does a great job with the uh, with the articles, and, and you know we can't forget about B behind the mic with the producing skills, helping elevate our our live stream status um, with uh, live stream graphics. You know, elevating the viewers' experience because I think, I mean, we forget a lot of our athletes are from like our international, so they got family who wants to tune in. And if we can just, I mean, we're, we already are doing that. We're already creating a better product for them because that's the number one thing we talked about as an SID team is to level up the streaming, the streaming capabilities, which we are. Um, so let your friends know, let your family know. If you need to hear more about what's going on at Westcliff when it comes to sports and culture, make sure you go to Apple and grab or wherever you get your podcasts, download that. And then don't be afraid to get online Get into your social media. You guys are on it anyway. Tell the truth and hit that like and subscribe when you see those West Cliff come up. Because I promise you, the content is excellent. We're, we, I mean, 
The live shots are excellent. The stories are even more in, intriguing than some of just the still photos. But I tell you, it is what it looks like when people are really working together and care about what their sports and their sportsmen are doing and sports women for that matter. Get on there, get subscribed and, and get a taste of what we're really talking about. The SID team was really working hard and really this is the visibility they have. We're, we're, what, what do they say? What does Dean Harris say? We're giving voice to the voiceless. And just like you said, we've got international awesome students that family members are, are that's their only way to connect. Don't miss out. Get on there. See what we're see what we're doing. See where we're heading, and and, and get your uh, everyday uh, fix for uh, Westcliff University athletics. I I can't wait. I mean we I mean we've been talking about. It. I don't know if you guys listening in are are like I, hopefully our energy and passion is coming through the through the audio on wherever you if you're in your car if you're at home chilling like like watch what's happening because you know it's exciting. It's all exciting, and we're only going to get better. Just remember one thing: we do this for you, but we do this for us as well because we're all family. And what does family really mean? Forget about me. I love you. We're here. We're here late nights, early mornings, trying to support our teams because you know what? They're the best thing we got going. Our student athletes are the best thing we got going. So we're we're, we're proud to be a part of it. But uh, we're really proud to bring those voices to you, and really proud to give you a glimpse into what really happens every day in in a Westcliff University athletics department. It's pretty awesome. I appreciate you, you Chase. B, I know you in the background holding it down, but you're not just a producer. You know that, right? We're going to have to get you digging in over here a little bit. What you want? Anything you got, sir. You're a wealth of knowledge, and you just, you know, well, you get it. You get it. I, what are you looking I, forward to this in. season? Well, let me tell you, I just want to uh, just talk about this little uh, video that's coming out. I've been okay. working hard on it about three months worth of work putting into oh, this wow. little documentary uh, wow. on the baseball team. It was a real, real special team. And uh, I think people are really going to learn a lot about these uh, players and our student athletes. So uh, please um, view it. Please share it. Please like it. Please subscribe. Um, just get it out there because these kids deserve the attention. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been working on. And, and besides everything else. So it's been fun. No, that's awesome. And, and really, Hey, don't miss this. This team was no joke. Oh, man, it's it's a heartfelt story. It's a strong story. It's an inspiring story. But don't miss out. These are some great student athletes and some great coaches that have built a team and 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 really a family. They're our family. They're not just a team. They're our family. And uh, to watch their ups and downs and what they've been through and uh, where they came out on the other side. And really, it'll help you pre be prepared for what they're going to do this season. Because that team is still here and we're ready to ride. So uh, get involved. Uh, uh, find it on. Find it either uh, streaming. Uh, check on your um, social media to make sure that you're connected there. But make sure you don't miss that at all. Brand new men's beach volleyball coach Fernando. Fernando, how are you doing? How's your day going so far? Good. A little busy, but uh, I'm glad I'm here. You know, we're glad to have you. Um, I mean. You have been part of Westcliff for a lot longer. I know you were with the women's side. So right now we're just going to kick it off of just like, I just want to know what was your experience with that women's team uh, in the spring and what made you want to get in charge of the men's program here? So I, uh, I literally two weeks before I was brought on um, to the West, uh, Westcliff women's team, I, I, I said out loud to somebody, and I had been thinking it, but I said, I want to coach college beach volleyball. And like, I felt like that was the next step. And so when I got the opportunity, it was, uh, it was really cool. I didn't know what to expect. The, the, the girls were amazing. It was like we walked in, me and Tim walked into a great situation where we were stacked with a team that had the ability to win everything. And not only that, but great team culture. So it was like, it felt seamless for me to walk into that situation. It was great. So now, I mean, in, in our men's beach team is really young. I think they're officially, I think they're in their third season uh, as a program. So very young. I want to ask you, this is like a personal like question in terms of like about the men's beach volleyball scene in the U S like, 
Women's Beach has definitely like been on the rise for the last couple of seasons. Um, it's a NCAA sponsor sport. Um, we just saw, I believe, USC won it again for another time this past, like in the spring. So I just want to know, uh, I know men's beach volleyball is on the rise. So um, what else do, do just more programs need to be picking up the sport? Um, because it seems very like there's not a lot of teams that have men's beach. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah. I mean, it, it is spot on. We, uh, I mean, we're having to find teams to play. That's kind of where the men's uh, beach volleyball, the, the state of the men's beach volleyball program is. Um, but it's really encouraging, right? Because you can kind of follow what the women did. And I think they started, let's just say like 10 years ago. And they started the same way that we did. We, they started with club teams, essentially, that transitioned into, um, I'm not even sure they were even scholarship. It was a scholarship sport for USC, for UCLA, for all those teams. And it slowly caught fire um, to the point where we're at now. Like, I think there's like 150 schools that offer beach volleyball for women, right? So at one point they were there just like we were. And the draw is there's already um, a ton of boys, men that play indoor. Um, and the draw is the sun, it's the beach, it's the lifestyle. So once they they experience it, it's, it's an easy transition for those guys. So it's just about getting them out there and uh, and showing them how fun it is, and, and that there's also and that there's also a path to playing in college. That's a big part of it, right? So as soon as there was a path for those eighth graders, ninth graders, tenth graders that could see that they could play college beach volleyball, that's really when it and get money, get a scholarship for it. That's really where it took off. So the men just need to see that there's a path for them to play in college, and that's just exposing our younger kids to it, which CBVA does a great job. Other organizations, AVP next and all those uh, do a great job of that as well. Guys need to step their game up. It sounds like they, you know, you, the women came in, they blazed the trail. They left the door open. Let's go. Right. Well, and let me, and to put it into perspective, right. So there's half a million, roughly, I, I did this whole deal like, uh, like three years ago, there's half a million, uh, women girls that play club indoor somewhere around there 550,000 like three years ago out of those 550,000 three years ago there was roughly 30,000 women that played or girls that played beach volleyball so on the men's side let's just say on the men's uh, indoor club seeing let's just say we have a hundred thousand boys maybe a hundred and fifty thousand and out of those like I can, I'm guessing maybe, maybe 10,000 boys play um, beach volleyball. And it's just, a, it, there's just, they're not exposed to it. It's not, it's not a sport where all the youth organizations that are hosting tournaments are like really going into that market because for them, it's like, you know, I can hold a women's tournament or a girls youth tournament and get 50 teams or I can hold the boys tournament and get 12. So financially, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for those guys to, to run. Those. So it really takes guys that love and want to develop and grow the sport for those young athlete, young boys that want to come out and do this. So like just, you know, to go out and grind and uh, and and sometimes take a loss and. Uh, and just do it purely out of the love. Um, I think. um ABCA is doing a good job. They're trying to get it going, but it's, it's tough. It's tough. Like, just like anything. I, um, I guess this is, this is a amateur question, but I just feel just by watching, is it true that the level of difficulty in beach is slightly higher than indoor? I mean, soft sand. I mean, you gotta be able to jump. You gotta be stronger. You gotta be more uh, uh, conditioned. I would think what's your thoughts on indoor versus outdoor? So I, so I, I coach, I have a beach club. So I coach, like I'll have 12 year olds, 14 year old girls and some boys that I, I, I'm really excited when they go indoors and they get all those fundamentals nailed. Like they learn how to pass indoors. They learn how to hit indoors because it's a lot easier. And for a 12, a 13 and a 14 year old, maybe even a 15 year old, 
like learning those skills indoors is like night and day because they'll come out to the beach on a windy day and we live in Southern California and rarely is there like no wind at any beach. There's always going to be wind. And for those kids to come out or even adults to come out and play on a windy day with just two people on the court, having to move, having to jump, having to cover the, like, the majority of the court is hard. It's super hard. And, and you know, it takes, it takes, I, I tell the, the kids, I'm like, you got to come out here six times before you even start thinking about like, um, if after six times you're discouraged and don't want to come back, it's okay. But you got to get your sound legs. You got to get used to the wind, the sun, yeah. all the elements. But it is, it's hard. But it's, it's fun. I mean, like, who doesn't want to be at the beach? I mean, know? seriously, I remember the first time I think I saw Gabby Reese, a young man. She's six foot plus and just covering so much ground. I mean, and and pop up like I just, it was just impressive. And I played sports. I played martial arts and, and, and I, you know, you go out there and you try to play and it's like, look, this is just another conditioning level. It's like literally doing 20 minutes of up downs, just digging. I mean, they're amazing athletes. I think it's, I, I thought that that was the case, but man, just to see it in person and really see them get into it. It's like you said, two people, you're covering all of that ground and, and man, it's amazing what they can do. Yeah. It's uh it becomes your second home, right? And just like anything, you get so used to it that it doesn't really, like it doesn't even after whatever, six months, four months, whatever it is, however you uh, get used to it, it, it just really, there's no second thought to it. What I tell the girls and what I tell the boys that I coach is like, we wanna get to the point where you show up to the wind, to I mean, to the beach. And if there's, if it's a windy day that it's like, oh, instead of being like, Oh, it's so windy it's going to be really hard it's not going to be fun that we establish and we recognize which way the wind is blowing so we can play in it and so we can adapt to it and uh i love that i love that we, you know you get to think more in doubles than you do in six man right or, or indoors indoors you just have your specific to a position that's all you have to do and on the beach you have to develop all your passing your setting your hitting your defense your blocking your serving and um, yeah, it's like, it's the best thing I, for me. It's like my daughter does it. Like my daughter was introduced to beach first and now she's going into club indoors. And she's like, this is so easy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I know, it's so cool. I love it. I, I just remember football days in the summer and every once in a while we would have a beach day or we'd go run the, the dunes. And I just remember it being so miserable because what I could do on flat ground, the minute I started running in soft sand, I felt like I was starting from the beginning. Oh yeah. You get these you get these great athletes that are like great indoor athletes that are studs and they can jump and they're you know, they walk out to the beach or they get on the sand and it's over. Like you'll get like a less talented team just give them a beating because they know how to play in the elements, they they're used to the sand, they can so it's really fun. Uh, it can be ego crushing for a good athlete to get out there. I bet it. I'm just thinking to myself, how you want to play? Chase, you want to go play some beach volleyball? I mean, I mean, I, mean, I did. I, I did in college with my did buddies. You? No, hey, don't, don't. First of all, like oh. with my buddies on the oh, okay. like when we find a sand corner, like, oh, hey, you guys want to play some beach? It's like, sure. And we still did like indoor rules, like six v six, and we weren't going that hard in the paint. But it's hard, man. Because I mean, shoot, they're like. Like I'm just going back to when I played in high school, the the conditioning part of practice would like, all right, we're gonna go to the beach and we're just gonna run and how gassed you are after like 30 minutes where with with beach, I mean it I mean, how long do those I mean, I think one of the women's pairs, I think they played for about two hours and thirty minutes, I think getting close to three hours at one point because wow. they were just trading points back and forth. I'm like, that is a marathon. Oh pretty God. much that's like that's like those long games in tennis where you just it just doesn't ever end and oh, literally it's a war of attrition then it's like who's mm -hmm. gonna gas first who's gonna make that mental mistake first i mean it's exciting I, I mean sports is awesome but man especially the ones i don't know the more i engage i mean it, it's it's just amazing so i have a question for you coach as as for some of me like me don't know a lot about it 
if I were to look in the professional ranks or even the collegiate ranks and you said, I, these players do it the right way, who would I be going to look at if I was a young lady trying to emulate a, 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 someone to, to uh, uh, play the sport? It's interesting you, you brought up that question. I was trying to find ways to engage more uh, boys or um, indoor players to come to our matches and and just kind of check it out. And then inside of that, to ask some good friends who have been successful in the sports or in the sport to uh, to come out and just be there. And then I was thinking, well, how can we get, draw them out? And they'd be like, well, I, you know, I was thinking, can we do a Westcliff University Lifetime Achievement Award to these guys that have, like men that have paved the way, right? Like mm. for, for the sport. And uh, Jake Gibb, who is an HB guy, came from Utah as somebody that like did it. I mean, like he showed up, he never, he never played or very limited high school volleyball, indoor or beat, but he was just a great athlete. And it helped that he was like six, 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 seven. Oh, and I remember when he first showed up to the beach and it was this guy that was really, really tall. And uh, and he just went to work like every single day. And you would see him and you're like, dude, that guy just shows up every single day. And I think he's been to four Olympics now. Uh, he just retired wow. last year. And, uh, and like humility comes to mind when I think of him, hardworking, um, a grinder. Um, mentally tough, uh, somebody like Jake Gibb. Oh man, it's just he's just an amazing athlete. K uh, Casey Jennings, who is like one of the top five best defenders in beach volleyball of all, of all time. And I, I'm I'm turning back the clock, and people may not even know who these guys are. But the reason that I was bringing up that lifetime achievement awards and the guys that I would think of is because these are the guys that weren't the All American in college. Uh, they weren't automatically studs. They weren't recruited out of high school. They weren't the top recruits. That were guys that reached the highest levels of beach volleyball. They won Manhattan Open, Hermosa Beach Open, FIVB Opens, went to the Olympics. And it's not the guy that you think of. You know, there's plenty of All Americans uh, that played indoors that have transferred to the beach and like not done well. And it. And, like I said, this beach volleyball will crush your ego. Uh, and all of a sudden you're taking losses to guys that um, that no way you should be taking losses to just because they have beach experience, though. So Casey Jennings comes to mind. Perry Walsh Jennings, I had an opportunity to work with her. I think she, she, she's got three gold and one bronze. Uh, been to five Olympics, one indoor four on the beach. And, uh, and like, you get you get to see how somebody like that gets there. And it is amazing. Like the ability to think that anything is possible, right? The, the only people that limit us is like, is me. Like when I, the, the only people, the only person that's ever going to stop me from doing something within reason, of course, not playing NBA and stuff like that is me. And it's my doubt and it's my fear. And, uh, and I don't believe in myself enough to be vulnerable, to go fail. And when you see an athlete like Carrie, it is unreal. It is like, she probably believes that she can fly. I mean, it, it is that crazy. Like just Our the belief. reality is, is unbelievable. And it's so awesome. Carrie Walsh Jennings comes to mind. Uh, Kelly Clays, I had an opportunity to work with her. She just went to the last Olympics. And again, it's like you get to see these players. She, she went to USC. You get to see the, the growth of these players, not just physically and the skill, but the emotional growth and how to handle certain situations. And you have to go through it, right? You have to go through the pain. You have to go through the failure, but it's how you show up the next day. And so when you see her uh, really have a tough time for like a brief period, and the brief period was maybe a year of like, she's not winning, but you know, everything is there but she's just not winning. And, uh, and all of a sudden she breaks through and you're like, it was, you know, it was bound to happen. She just had to go through that learning curve, just like every great athlete. Uh, rarely do you see somebody just step on the court and win, right? There's always a learning curve. Wow. I mean, uh, one, what you said is awesome to, to, to get over yourself. I, 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 
I think that's all sports. I mean, but you really got to get over the fear of failure and just go out there and let the chips fall where they may. And then what'd you say? And then get up and do it again tomorrow. I mean, it takes just that relentless attitude uh, to get up when you, you're not the best or you're not winning and really coming after it. I think that's a strong point that you just made. We did, uh, we, we did uh, during the COVID, we did, it was me, Carrie, and uh, we did like 30 something uh, Zoom meetings with all these different clubs across the country. And uh, um, the girl, there were beach clubs, there were indoor clubs, and we had anywhere from like 25 to uh, 250 girls on these things. And the same question that they would ask her was like, because in beach, you're so exposed. You're so exposed. There's only two of you. And they're always going to target the weaker player. And so when they serve you repeatedly, that means you're the weaker player. Uh -huh. and, and, and if you're like, and if you're having a bad day, they're going to put it on you even more. And there's no, there's no subs. There's no, I mean, you can take a timeout, but you can't get it out. And so you're like, Oh my gosh. And repeatedly the question that everybody asked her was like, how do you get past that? Like, how do you get past that? Right. And it always comes back to being in that moment. It's like, what just happened, you can certainly learn from it, but it doesn't matter anymore. Because if you're stuck on what just happened mentally, and we're talking about like 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids, and it happens to adults, you know, as well, whether it's at work, whether wherever it is, and that you're not present enough, that you're still thinking about what just happened, um, that you're going to make the same mistake again. Right. Because they're going to go back and they're going to serve. And if you're thinking about like, oh, my gosh, I just need to pass one right here. And I hope they don't serve me. And you're in your head. It's over. They're going to serve you guaranteed. And uh, and you're going to feel the pain. <laughs> you're going to feel the pain that it's crazy. All right, coach, just for a little pivot, let's um, I want to I want to look at what you got in store for us for the season coming forward. So some of the men's I mean, we're coming back from the first ever national championship with the AVCA um, happened last season. Uh, you have a good group of returners who have been part of the program and also have um, been part of our indoor program here as well. But, um, and, and like, and like we mentioned earlier when we were asking questions about how there's not a lot of teams. So since you, there's not a lot of teams to like, quote unquote, do a traditional season structure, um, what do you, how do you handle that adversity in terms of like, there's not a lot of competition, um, until like postseason play. Like, so do you guys go pick up like a club team? Do you guys enter into tournaments? Like how's that process is? Cause that's gotta be tough too. So, um, I've been really lucky to play on some really strong teams where like our practices and our, were so like competitive that when we went and actually played other teams, like it was easy for us. Like our, 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 our starters, we would sit out and then they'd bring in the bench and the bench's goal was to beat the team that we just beat by like more. Uh, and that, I'm so excited for this year and, and I haven't said it out loud and I'm trying to be really careful that I don't like just blurt it out, but I said it out loud the other day and I guess I can say it right now. Our number one team last year was uh, DJ and Mohammed Elias. I think we have one team that can beat them. And it's so good. And it is so good to be like a team that just won a national championship that was stacked already, that's even stronger this year, that's gonna like really push each other in practices so when we do get an opportunity to go play matches or we do go and have an opportunity to go to the national championship, whatever, that we're like, we're prepared. I mean, like our, I, I want our practices literally to be tougher than anybody we play. Uh, and then so, but there has to be a prize, right? You just can't practice all the time. There has to be a Christmas and opening of presents of letting these guys loose. And that is some scrimmages, which I'm calling scrimmages, matches uh, against some uh, San Diego, uh, Orange County, and Long Beach teams that uh, I have personal relationship with these guys. These guys are like, you know, open level players. And I call them 
bottom feeders, but some lower level AVP guys uh, that we get an opportunity to play with. And the reason I'm doing that is one for the competition. And then also for some of our younger players, like you said, to, to get exposed to that level of playing a guy that's qualified and played in the, in an AVP tournament or whatever it is to be like, Oh my gosh, that guy last week played in the Chicago open. Now, like we're playing against him. That's a really awesome experience. That's such an awesome experience. And I think that's what makes it a little bit unique with the men's beach volleyball scene is because since the, I mean, really the only governing body for the sport is like the AVCA and, but like you can play teams that are, you know, compete. Yeah. Like you said, competing in the open division on like the pro circuit It, it also not, not even just playing at that, but like, I'm also thinking in my head of like, they're playing men. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're playing people who are in their like late twenties, early thirties. And you're pro like, they're some of the guys on the team might be like 19, 20 years old. That is such a cool, like fun life experience in of itself to be able to do. I've asked some of those guys that are managing. I call them. I call. I got. I, you know, their coaches, managers that are putting the guys together, and they're like, "Who do you want us to bring?" I'm like, "Bring like your best. Like, don't hey. like, don't bring don't bring like a, a crappy team. Like, if you bring a crappy team, we're gonna beat you. Like, <laughs> with it, right? like we're coming. Hey, we're coming here to like." put in work so please test us come on now and what did so, you think this was <laughs> they'll smile and like it's already started nobody has wow. said anything but you can just feel when i see those guys that they want to they want to beat us and they want to beat us bad right you know, they want to be like oh, dude we, we beat fernando's team or whatever it is so that later, two weeks down the road, when I see him at the beach, they can point at me and, and tell everybody. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> That's right. Uh huh. That's okay. But we're gonna have a different story to tell you when you, when we hit the beach later in the week. Give him the business, coach. Give him the business. I love that. It, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm excited. I get excited after these interviews. I'm not gonna lie. We as a as an SID team have been super impressed with everything that you guys have been able to do. Um, but no lie. We are anxious to see what you do next. Uh, we we thought we had a great last year, but I've talked to you a couple times, a few different since you've been here, and you got me excited about the season. Let's 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 kick some tail. Let's really turn it up on these folks. I think you guys got the ability that the team to do it. And man, I promise you, we're gonna build the support for you on the other side to make sure we got some faces in the stand to cheer yeah, you on. It's it's super fun. I, I finally had an opportunity that media day chase to have everybody there in front of me. I've met some of the guys individually, but not really seen what what it looks like together and, and how they interact with each other, which is always fun, right? Because you have guys that are returning that are like high fiving each other. You have some younger guys, whether it's a walk on, right? He's not on scholarship. He's not the big dog and how he mixes into that. And and it's cool how accepting everybody was, right? And and it's like, and everybody knows that everybody's name, number one, which is a big deal, right? It's not like, oh, absolutely. Who's that, who's that guy from Texas? It's not nobody saying like, who's that guy from Lithuania or wherever? It's like they know each other's names, and 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 there's certainly some some respect, but there's also like you can already see some of the returners, uh, and some of the new guys a little bit of that, I don't want to say rivalry, but that competitiveness of like, yeah, we're going to show you what we did last year and why we're national champions. And mm -hmm. the young, the other guys are like, okay, all right, we're going to see. I'm going to yeah, show exactly. you. <laughs> show <You're> me. So <laughs> cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Exciting. It's, well, we, don't, I, we appreciate your time, coach. I know you got a busy schedule uh, and we'd love to have you back a, a little bit uh, towards the middle of the season uh, to kind of get a little update, but we appreciate your time. We're super excited, like I said, to see what you're able to do. Uh, and we'll be uh, uh, on the sidelines cheering you on the whole way. So uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And hopefully you can come back and see us again. Thank you. Let me just say one last thing. I'm, I'm very, um, I wasn't sure how I was going to react to this job or how much fun it was going to be. Um, but I got to tell you, I'm having such a good time. Like I am having such a good time. And it's not like, like the coaching is going to be fun. The coaching, the like, but the interaction that I have to have with these men, you know, young men, men, whatever, uh, as we learn each other's personalities and I get to push them and see how they react. I'm a, 
I love grabbing people's like guts and ripping them out and being like, that's what it feels like to feel uncomfortable. And there's only one way to grow from that is, is like to put it back together. Right. Okay. And so as I start pushing those guys together or pushing those guys slowly, slowly, and they're feeling like, Oh my gosh, is he, like what? Like, I love that, how they feel uncomfortable and they don't know what to expect. And inside of all that, there's like unconditional love for each one of them. Right. I love you regardless, but you're going to have to do the work. And as we get into that, I'm super excited. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm stoked. And uh, I, I don't want to say anything other than uh, we will do our best. Like I said, we're going to show up on time. We're going to try hard and uh, and let the chips fall where they may. Hopefully it's on our side. <laughs> yes, sir, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate your guys' time, too. Absolutely, Coach. You have a great day, and we'll hey, we'll see you out there on the on the sand. Thank you. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be super fun. We're trying to build a good environment around our matches. So, looking forward to it, Coach. Right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. As always, I'd like to thank my co-host SID Chase Dodge. Appreciate your help, brother, and our great producer Brandon Peterson. Thank you for all that you do. I'm Will Smith, your assistant AD, and this has been Building Greatness, the Warrior Way. Oh, and don't forget, please subscribe wherever you download your podcasts and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us get the word out about our warriors. Until next time, Westcliff family, what's family? Forget about me. I love you. Peace. Sweating tears breaking even no ends. Yeah, I did all that. Had to make it happen. Putting hours in my practice. I did all that. Yeah, I can't take no loss. Yeah, I don't even know what it costs. Huh. I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, I can't take no loss. Yeah, I don't even know what it costs. Yeah, I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, hit the ground and it go off. Yeah, yeah, run it, run it. Ooh, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year. Yeah. I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah, yeah. I really feel it's my time, think it's my big dog, walking big top, young veteran. Living legend, bet I'm better than them. This is my ship, I'ma jacket like let them in. Job and I let them in. They gon' rotate this so I keep the pedaling. Started a chain, the cycle is heaven sent. This is from God, but I'm not your reverend, not in the pool pit. I'm a big pool in this element, yeah. Said you gon' pull up, then settle it, yeah. I've been married to this hustle, this is my ring, watch I step in it, yeah. And I ain't even got a yard, but I'ma get it here. Watch I touch down, pulling plans out the clutch, everybody getting crushed. The Cush down is for us now. Have to work something, cause I had nothing in my pocket. Yeah, I did all that. Big plans, partners trying to make profits. Yeah, I did all that. Work sweating, tears breaking, even no wins. Yeah, I did all that. Had to make it happen. Putting hours in my practice, and I did all that. Yeah, I can't take no loss. Yeah, I don't even know what it costs. Huh. I hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah, hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah, I can't take no loss. Yeah, I don't even know what it costs. Yeah, I hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah.